Let me ask you a question. Is math invented or was it discovered? I find it funny that no matter if it is in high school, college or in the scientists and mathematicians, the discussion about the origin of math is everywhere. Sure, it differs between those groups, but I think the sheer existence of this discussion tells us a lot about the human mind. Now, you might expect me to tell you that, obviously, math is discovered and not made up by humans. Aliens at an intelligence level of ours or higher definitely have the same fascination for prime numbers and the like. Well, yeah, so that was easy. But let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. Alright, I'm not going to make it that easy. I claim that the question itself is redundant. It's like asking if English is invented or discovered, in a sense. One might say that, naturally, English, is, uh, English was invented over centuries by humans to communicate in a more efficient way than using hand symbols or ooh sounds. But that doesn't answer the question, at least if you translate English to mathematics. See, what we think of when we talk about English is the words, grammar and thoughts that define the English language. But asking if this could be somehow discovered is nonsensical. Humans could have found it as a relict from ancient intelligent species, or they could have been given it by extraterrestrial visitors. Neither way they wouldn't have discovered it. Discover is a notion of unfolding a concept, a fundamental reality that exists even before humans interpret it. Inventing is a notion of creating something new that didn't exist before. Sure, the words and grammar had been invented, but language itself is a fundamental concept that allows the exchange of information in a compressed way. It can only be discovered as this is a universal concept. As you can see, it is really important to ask the right question. Asking if English was invented or discovered doesn't provide enough detail to actually answer the question with yes or no, or rather it was invented or it was discovered. But how can we translate that to math? I think the Pythagorean theorem is one of the simplest and at the same time most beautiful concept of mathematics. It shows how humans can take sheer truth about reality as given and forget what lies underneath. If you remember your first years of high school or whatever it might be for your country, you should at least recall the following equation. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. A simple way to calculate the length of the third side of a triangle when two are given. As you can see, the angle between A and B is 90 degrees, so it's the right angle. Altogether, the three angles add up to 180 degrees. This knowledge comes in handy later in the video. If you would reflect the triangle alongside C, you get a rectangle. Now, if we add up all six angles, we must end up at 360 degrees. Keep that in mind. But for now, let's move the triangle as a reference in the corner of the screen. Let me clone this triangle three times and align them in this particular way. Now again remember, this is a right angle. Therefore we can conclude that all of the other outer angles are also pi half radians or 90 degrees. Let's also label the outer sides of this new formed shape. Refer to the reference triangle in the bottom left and it should be quite obvious that we have a pattern of alternating between B and A. So we can see that every side of this new shape is exactly the same, A plus B. We have mathematically proven that this shape actually is a square. I know, it's obvious you say, but believe me, proving this is important as it relies not on human intuition, but simply on logical patterns. Inside the newly created square, we have the four sides of the four triangles. As A and B always lie on the outside of the square, the inside must always be C. And to describe the area of this inner line square, we just multiply two sides, which in this case is c times c, or shortened c squared. Let me put this inner square side, and yes, you as well c squared, and slightly rearrange the triangles. And for now, let's fade out the labels so that the scene doesn't become too cluttered. It's important to know that I don't change the actual form of the triangles, even though it looks like it. You just have to trust me with this one. I had an argument with Python and it wouldn't let me simply rotate the triangle, so yeah. As you can see, we still have the sides B, which didn't change in length and the same is true for A. Well, that looks kind of messy, so let's again simply describe this new square on the bottom left as A squared. 
And we can do the same for the upper right, slightly bigger square, B squared. Now we have two new squares, A squared and B squared, which kind of sounds familiar. I know I'm repeating myself here a lot, but it's super important to reiterate those seemingly simple geometrical concepts. As we didn't change the overall size of the first initial outer green square, the difference between the first setup with the red square and this new setup with the two yellow squares is the two new yellow squares compared to the red square. It's exactly the same size, so the green square. That means we can get rid of the four triangles and simply by following those logical geometrical moves, we know that the area of the two yellow squares, a squared plus b squared, must equal the red square c squared. And there you go, Pythagoras theorem. Now, is math invented or discovered? Well, you tell me.